Hey guys, Matt from Silent Sega Dream here. I wanted to record this part of what is going to be this vlog right now before I went to bed while I still had the thoughts in my head. So I've been playing some acoustic guitar and I've kind of gone back to revisit chord progression, sequence, whatever you want to call it, that I've been kicking around for a long time. Years. And I've never really known what to do with it. And I never quite felt it was complete. Like it, it didn't have its other half. And I've tried before to make it happen or apply some sort of idea to it to see if it would work and just I don't know it never felt right so that's why I've just kind of been kicking around with it for years and you know I play it every now and then and I'm like damn I gotta do something with that someday I think I've even recorded it just to have it before so I wouldn't you know completely forget it but I don't ever seem to forget it for some reason but um I think I found the other half of it, and I'm pretty happy with it right now. And I was going to include it in this part of the vlog, but I sat here playing it for a long time with my metronome, and I think I just need to sleep for a while and then get up and come back to it. So. That's probably what I'm going to do, because I do want to share it with you guys. But, it's funny, like, I was sitting there playing it and thinking about it, and I kind of felt a lot of, a lot of thoughts that have just kind of been ricocheting around in my head for a long time, kind of come together in a sort of cohesive manner. And it's the first time I can think of where I've kind of consciously realized that, like, wow, that's, that's a bunch of my influences kind of coming together in one thing. And it's kind of funny, to be honest. So I went to music school. I graduated from Musicians Institute in 2008. I think that's right, 2008. It's 2013 now. I think it's 2008. I have to go double check. Um, a lot's happened since then. Well, really, there's. I, I learned a lot from many of the teachers there, but there was. There's a couple of guys that just really resonated with me personally. And, I mean, granted, I, I wasn't even really that, like, tight with either of them. Like, one guy, I think I had him for my single string improv class initially, which is like one of the core classes you have to take if you're going through the guitar program. Or at least it was at the time. I don't know if they still call it that, but... Um, Al Bonham. Al Bonham is a red-headed Canadian guy. Shoot, he's probably in his 40s when I was there. Might still be in his 40s. Might be in his 50s now. But I loved Al so much just his personality, his playing, sense of humor, that I ended up taking every class that he taught that I could possibly take. I remember taking country guitar, surf guitar, a couple of single string classes, my rhythm section class. God, I'm probably forgetting a couple. Several classes with Al. Anyway. Don't ask me why I remember this, but I remember sitting in single string one day in the back 
with my buddy Carles, who, if he ever sees this, hails from Catalan, Spain. I miss him. He, he always used to lean over to me while he was, like, doing some crazy, like, you know, unplugged, of course. We're all sitting there with our electric guitars, just kind of playing them acoustically. But he'd lean over doing some crazy legato lick and be like, Shred! We used to laugh about all kinds of shit. But, um... I don't know how we got on the subject of Steve Vai. I love Steve Vai. As a person and as a extremely well-rounded musician. But, um... Al said... There's one thing I don't like about Steve Vai. He always plays the right notes. Like, he never goes out of his way, really, to play the wrong notes. Unless it's some sort of crazy thing. And I don't know why that particular moment in time stuck with me, but it has, so... I, for whatever reason, will actually often think of that while I'm playing or writing or whatever, and I'll think, like, I should throw a couple of wrong notes in there. Because, A, why not? B, it's kind of fun. And, C, if done correctly, it can do the whole tension and then release thing. Because you're not going to hang on the wrong note, but you know, if you throw it in there and then kind of go away from it and go back to the right notes, whatever those are, you know, in Western music, then um, it does. It creates a nice tension and release. So, that's my owl thought that's floating around in my head. The other teacher was a guy named Dale Turner. Dale's like a musical computer stuck inside of, like, Bill Murray or something. Like, I actually have a, a, again, damn it, it's in the dark corner of the room, but I have a picture of Dale that I took out of Guitar World and put on my wall because he was in there for, for something. But he actually got a full-page photo. I was like, sweet! Uh, if anybody has any old issues of Guitar One, Dale was actually the West Coast editor. And... I think, maybe not on this channel, but on my personal channel on YouTube, like I favorited a couple of his videos because people have just posted random Dale doing all kinds of random shit, but I, I love Dale, and um, I kind of feel bad. I wasn't the best student in his classes by far, <laughs> but um, the same thing, like I'm still thinking about things that guy said years later, and just maybe not, like, even points that he was trying to, like, really, like, drive home for us, but just little offhand things, and I'm, like, they, they have, they've seriously influenced choices that I make when I play guitar, or just write music, or whatever, and, um, I've never felt like I was a very good finger picker. Not that I'm a good plectrum picker, but I've always felt that my, my, my finger picking was a little subpar. <clears throat> and I, so I was super stoked when like it came out after I graduated, but uh, he told me it was gonna be coming out. Dale wrote a book for Musicians Institute Press, which is their like kind of the book side of the school, because all the teachers write books, uh, called Power Plucking, which was a compendium of, like, basically lessons he had wrote on finger style playing and with all kinds of influences attached to them. And I, I, I got the book, like, as soon as it came out. I think I had to pre-order it on Amazon. But, um, that's actually where the beginnings of that progression came from, was me just going through Dale's book and playing, and, like, I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. 
and then I kind of started doing other stuff with it, and like, it wound up kind of being like, well, the first part of it at least is kind of like my take on that progression, which is kind of a classic progression. It's basically a C, A minor, G, F thing. I don't really want to attach a major or a minor to the F because I kind of choose to play different notes before I go back to the C. But um, that's what spawned my version of this progression that I've been kicking around for years. And then for whatever reason, I was sitting here at the metronome and like I have kind of a fancy drummer's metronome because I like that it has more features than normal metronomes. And yeah, I bought it when I was in school. Oops. Don't worry, it's durable. Um, but like the one thing with digital metronomes is that like you turn it on, you have to pick a tempo. I don't always know what tempo to like pick if I'm like, well, it's kind of like this fast. And it does have a tap button, but I don't know, the tap never really... Sometimes it works, sometimes I'm like, it's eh, not quite it. But um, I was listening to... So one of the podcasts I love to listen to is uh, called Pensado's Place. With primarily the engineer and mixer extraordinaire Dave Pensato interviewing other engineers and musicians. And I think it was one of the recent ones where he interviewed a guy named Danja. D-A-N-J-A. I wasn't really super familiar with the guy. But um, he does this thing called Batter's Box where he just does rapid fire questions and the person he's interviewing just throws out the first thing that comes to mind. Whatever that is. And he said, tempo. And Danger went, 95. And I thought, I mean, I'm listening to the audio version of this. I'll put a link down below. It's actually a weekly show on YouTube. It's about an hour long, give or take a little. And, um, I don't ever really watch them. I found out that there's a podcast version, so I listen to the podcast because it's a little more convenient for me and my lifestyle. But, um, they really kind of caught me off guard, and I was like, 95? Why 95? And come to find out, the guy's wrote, written a ton of, like, very, very successful songs and worked with a ton of great musicians, and... I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm sitting here playing the acoustic guitar, and I'm like, I don't know what tempo, and then I just remembered, 95. I'm like, okay, so I punch up 95, and I hit go, and I, you know, start working at, like, this new and improved version of the progression, and I was like, damn, that's actually about right. It feels good, like, right, right there, because it's not too slow. For the longest time, for whatever reason, I would turn on the metronome and just go immediately to 80 BPM. And I'd start at 80, and then if I'd work up. And then for a while, I'd start, ah, I'm going to start at like 112, or like, you know, pick some random number above that. And, yeah, there's that middle area there where it's like mid-tempo, almost slow tempo. I don't know what you call it. I always got a kick out of that, though, when you like look through guitar notation or whatever and it's like medium tempo or medium rock or whatever like, who the fuck comes up with that shit but um 95 felt good and I'm sitting there playing it and then like you know I'll, my, my brain will start to drift and zone out cause you know it's a certain point it's more about practicing the the mechanics the physical mechanics of it than it is like I know what I want. I just got to get the appendages and phalanges and whatever to do it. So I was sitting there thinking I had to stop and be like, God damn, like part of me's thinking about Al, part of me's thinking about Dale, part of me for some reason referenced this dude that I know very little about other than I listened to an interview. And I was like, that's, that's weird. 
Like, I'm never really cognizant of it. But it all kind of came through me. And uh, I'm going to bed after this. But when I get up, I think I'm going to sit down and keep working on it. And if I can get it pretty decent, I'm going to try and record it on this. And then uh, share it with you guys. So that's about all I got. I think I'll just tag it on to the end here. Take it easy. Don't think too much, like me. I just woke up, but that's pretty close. Oh man. 